But welcome to What's Going On Live. And I got to tell you all, it is a beautiful feeling to be live, to be coming live. to you guys. So this is live. Now, like I said, my first week, I had my special guest. I had my brother, Joe Subo, in the building. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. I'm not worthy. Cut it out. I'm not worthy. <laughs> You're working on some newer stuff. You got some stuff coming up. And I know you want to get that out there to the people. I hear the chat room, first of all, is crowded. Yeah. And you are yeah. going to talk to them. They're, look, look. They're in the building. What's up, guys? <laughs> What's happening, man? Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, 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 buddy. Hello. No, that's a great looking TV. I'm going to get that out but after being after two, three days, oh man, the best pizza I had in the world was really? in Afghanistan. So race pizza is definitely off the Oh day. man, no that way. Afghanistan pizza is <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Hey, welcome to another episode of What's Going On Live down here on FRP TV. I'm your man, Big Murph, and of course, you can catch me each and every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 7 p.m. And I tell you, each week I bring you a special guest. I know y'all missed me the last two weeks. I'm sorry about that. You know, so many things has been happening. I've been taking care of some things, but I'm back. You're here. I'm here. So there's no need to explain anything else other than the fact that I'm here now. You're here with us. And welcome to FRP TV. In fact, I got a special guest in the building that you guys know. I'm telling you, if you party, if you've been to all the clubs back in the days, then you've seen this brother on the wheels of steel, on the one and twos, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. What, you know, Reggie Wells is in the building. Reg, what's up, Reg? What's I, going on? I, I, had, I, 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 I had to say... Um, I had to cut it short because okay. I, I was saying wheels are still the one and twos. Mm -hmm. What was it back then? Well, you had it right. I had it right. The one and two. One and two. The wheels right. are still. Okay. The thirty threes, the forty five. There you go. Right. right. <laughs> Anybody play seventy eight? No, 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 no. They didn't play this the seventy eight. Eight tracks. No eight no tracks. Eight tracks. Oh, no, no. Right. We had some eight tracks back when I was um, playing at three seventy one. Okay. Matter of fact, we used to make them for uh, the uh, the cab service back then. It was oh, Godfather okay. cab right, service. Right. Oh yeah, Godfather cab. Matter right. of fact, I still have some. At the house. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I want to convert them to like MP3, put okay. them on a CD or something like that. You, you know, it's funny. I had um, I interviewed Steve Harvey um, <laughs> during the um, okay. Love Don't Cost a Thing. It was him, and I had um, Nick Cannon. So right. when I'm talking to Steve Harvey in in the movie, I think he was at home and he was listening to his eight track. So okay. I said, Steve, I said I would have brought my eight track to you because I said the <laughs> only guy I knew who knew how to fix him. Right. Passed away. Right, right, I said, right. so, you know, I, I was going to bring it to you. He said, as long as you would have kept the music in there, you could have brought it to me. I said, no, 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 no. I wanted to bring it to you without <laughs> because I know you. You would have took the music. He took the music. So right, right, right. I, I say that to say this. If you got anything on 8-track, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out who might be able to take that there's music. There's some people. There's some, there's some. Matter of fact, I came across somewhere. I was walking and um, I saw an electronic store. Okay. And it was advertising. If you have an 8-track uh -huh. and you want to convert it into a CD or right, MP3, right. you know, bring it in. But I was just walking there. I, I forgot where that. I don't know. <laughs> you remember where it is now? What happens is you walk in and say, Man, I remember I came by here. Y'all said, Bring the A track. Y'all said, Me don't know nothing. He's not here. How do you? He, he, John, he, he died 10 years ago. You should have came then. You're like, right, you know, right, right, like, right. So you, you'll get lucky if you find that right, person. Right, right. But because I, I have stuff at home that mm -hmm. I want to convert, like, you know, when I first started my show, that's a big three quarter tapes, man. I'm like, right, right. bulky thing. So right. I got stuff at home, like, with, mm -hmm. with interviews on there that I would like to get off, but, you know, I, I got to find somewhere. And then you got places that you got to ship it to, and I don't trust right, it. Right, right. You don't, I don't trust, trust it. I don't trust it. That's my original. If you have so if, if it's a good one, right. and, you know, you got some legends on there. Like, right. I have an eight track tape. It's with Hollywood, myself, Starsky, uh, Eddie Chiba. Wow. So I could imagine oh, if man. somebody get a hold of that, you know, they'd be yeah. making some copies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we yeah, was definitely. all in rare yeah. form too, yeah. man. We was doing that thing. Can't have that happen. No, I can't have. You know, that. it's like sending your, your um, film to the to the Photoshop. They're like, yeah, duplicate your pictures, man. <laughs> Ooh, he was with who? Go and buy me a, a metal box and put uh -huh. that that one yeah, you should, eight yeah. track right and lock it up right. Put it in a time capsule. Somebody yeah, open it up later. There you go. There you go. Anyway, Reggie Wells is in the house, man. Let's let's. Let's go back to Reggie Wells prior to doing what you do. No, you're talking about how many years? I yeah, mean, from well, the beginning. Let, let's let's like, let's go uh, from beginning. Cavemen, yeah, cavemen, cavemen women, cavemen, man, cavemen, cavemen. There you go, <laughs> man, the thaw. Oh, so you're talking about at least close to, I say, forty years. Matter of fact, it might be forty years, or it might be forty-one or forty-two wow. years. That's a long time. Um, 
back then, believe it or not, um, I had a nickname. Okay. It was called Nikki B from CC. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but <laughs> I remember I, I was I was looking for that flyer because uh -huh. um, I remember seeing my name on the flyer for right. the first time right. and. I was showing people in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. yo, look at it, man. Yo, I'm on the I'm flyer. Fly, right. And they said, who's Nikki B? <laughs> <laughs> so I, you sure that's you? I said, <laughs> I said to myself, well, this is not going to work for yeah, me. Yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. said, well, uh, you know, you hear Frankie Crocker right. on the radio, Jerry Bloodsoe, right. Hank Span, right. or Johnny Vaughn Allen. Allen Vaughn Johnny Allen, people right. had their real yeah. names. Right, so right, right. I said, well... <laughs> Reggie Wells, sound pretty good there. Reggie there Wells, ring a bell, raise some hell. What you oh, think? There you go. There you go. There you go. And that's it. The rest is history. Right. Yeah. But, How long did you go with the um the, the first name before you changed? Uh, less it? than a year. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because right. you know I'm showing flyers. But they right. they didn't have my picture on there, but they just had the name, and right. people really didn't know right. me. Far as they knew me from the neighborhood, Reg, you know, right. but no Nikki B from right. CC. So yeah. I just cut that out, you know, right away. You know, so I said, I'm going to keep it real. I'm just going to have Reggie Wells. Right. Cause, you, go ahead. No, I was going to say, because it's crazy. You tell people, yeah, I'm going to be doing a party down at so-and-so. <laughs> the flyers, you know, go down to the barbershop, pick up the right. flyers and go to the store, get the flyers. Right. But the flyers say, yo, you got the flyer with, you know, Reggie doing a party. Um, right, you got right. the flyers, you pick it up. Yeah, there's flyers over there. Pick it up. Uh, he ain't on this yeah, fly. I ain't going to that party. <laughs> yeah, he, right, you're you right, right. So, so and, and I'm glad you changed it. You know, yeah, I changed it, and you know, it, it worked out for me. Right. And um, um, and I just did my thing. The first club that I ever worked for or worked in was the La Martinique. Oh, La Martinique. And I want to tell you how I really started. Okay. And this is a true story. When um, my voice had started changing at the age of like 13 okay. or 14. And I used to always listen to Hank Spann on WWRL. Okay. And they had it like a, a contest, right? And if you could name your favorite radio station. So I used to come home and I look in the phone book and mm -hmm. I'll call somebody under my name, right? right. And I'd turn up the radio real loud, have the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I have the phone. The <laughs> right, I have the phone right by the radio mm -hmm. and I said, um, I call them. Say, good evening. Um, is this the Wells residence? And they go, yes. They go, yeah. I said, well, if you can name your favorite radio station, I got a grand prize selected just for you. Oh <laughs> man! And they be go, oh 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 oh, and they name the radio station. And I said, congratulations! You just won a Panasonic console color TV that doesn't work. And I hang up the phone. <laughs> That's how I really started. <laughs> you know that remind me of? Remember when Bill as used to go? You had to answer your phone. Um, mm -hmm. um, I forgot. Uh, I forgot what Bill was. It was a it was a moniker they had. They when you answer your phone, hi WBLS. Oh, it was WBLS is best. Okay. I think WBLS used to call you, and you had to answer your phone. WBLS right. is best. Right. Right. You know, so that that remind me of that. You know, when 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 you calling people, and you know, you got the the radio up, you got the. The voice, you got the microphone right, there, right, and you're right, telling people right, like, name right, your, because right. they, they used to do that. Can you name your favorite radio station? And you right. know what's funny is listening to people uh, ask that question or mm -hmm. being asked that question, and they forget the station they listen to. Right, right, right. Because they're all excited. Yeah. They're waiting to you know, see what they want. And, right, right, right. And they can't remember what station they was listening to. But it was a <laughs> lot of fun. <laughs> and, and did anybody ever catch you? I mean, you know, no, they no, catch on your they, no, they didn't know wow. who I was. Wow. And what happened. So it was random calls. Yeah, it was just okay. random okay. calls. And then what happened, I was listening to the radio station, and then um, BLS at the time had a commercial on the air saying, how would you like to be a DJ in your own spare time? You know, so I kept on hearing this commercial. Then they, you know, they said free audition, and I'm listening, and I'm listening. And I said, one day I, I wrote the information mm -hmm. down, and I went down there to this uh, broadcasting uh, uh, school called Broadcasting and Announcing. And I walked in there, <laughs> and I'm sitting there up there in the office. I'm looking at this billboard, or matter of fact, a lot of pictures uh -huh. of different <clears throat> announcers, newscasters, mm -hmm. and radio personalities, and television announcers. And I'm sitting up here. I'm saying, I must really be souping myself up. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> like, especially seeing the names on the board. Like, right. Okay. And then I, I said, Let me get out of here. I'm yeah. ready to walk out the door. And, and the lady said, came out from the back. And she said, Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, can I help you? And then, you know, I said, uh, well, since I'm down here, let me just right, stay right. in. I auditioned, and 
she said, you have a nice, you know, tone to your voice. And then she said, well, she gave me some material to rehearse and right. this and that. But anyway, from there, uh, I, I received a certificate, certificate from Broadway. Broadcasting. Hello, broadcasting Hello, and announcing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell, <laughs> can you? That, that's what I said about live TV because that's the one thing. Remember I right. was telling you, I said, I always wanted to do pre-recorded. Right. Said, so those edit, things right. edit right out. But this, I right. love live TV because, you know, people get to see the realism. And, right. and, you know, don't think we make mistakes. Right. Man, I got so much B-roll footage of me making mistakes. Can't remember the name <laughs> of the group. I'm, I'm, it was just so many things, man, because we get the lights on. It's right, like, right, uh, right. Bravo Dust, uh, my name is Rob Kramer, you know. You know right. So it's, it's, it's one of those things. But right. it's okay because I do it too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, from there, then um, I met a friend of mine. We, you know, we grew up together, and his name was Jerry Roebuck. Okay. Matter of fact, he was the president of the Black Expo. Oh, okay. But at that time, when I first met him, uh, he was a promoter. Okay. And him and I were seeing uh two sisters you know they and and i would be in the living room and he'd get up around about three thirty in mm. the morning and grab all these flyers and walk out the door and i used to ask you know my friend i said uh where is he going mm -hmm. she said he's going to promote i said promote what she said well a party i'm looking at the time so but he used to hear me always trying to imitate being mm -hmm. a dj so then one day he decided to Invite me down to La Martinique. See, okay. before I was just an MC. Right. They call me the man with the golden voice that talk more shit than the toilet bowl can flush. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he asked me. He said, "Well, Raj, man, come on down to right. La Martinique." Now, La Martinique <clears throat> is the same place where the Silver Shadow used to be. Oh, okay. So, so he invited me down and. You know, I had put some rhymes together, and uh -oh. I, all I was doing was just talking over the music while the DJ was playing. Right, right. And whatever I was doing, I don't know, whatever I was doing, you know, the girls was liking it. And when he gave me my first, now that's $75. I was only there for two hours. Wow. That's a lot of money You're back like, then. I can live with this. Right? <laughs> you, you need me back uh, tomorrow? You got a party tomorrow? You know what? Let, 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 let's do a favor. I want to uh, take a break. I want to go to a video. Okay. And uh, we can come back and talk some more because, you know, we, we want to go from, you know, from then and, mm -hmm. and, and, and bring it up to, like, you know, all of the events and parties that you throw. Okay. Um, you got new stuff coming up, you yes. know, new in your venues. Yes. Um, you do boat rides. You right. did the Cotton Club. I mean, there's so many things that right. you've done. You know, so we're going to bring everybody up to speed because now you got young people out there listening and say, oh, not my neck. I'm like, ain't heard of that. Boss of the National right, you right, know. Right, right, right. But they'll hear Bessemer, they hear uh, Alhambra. Alhambra. You know, it was funny. Right. I used to never could say Alhambra. I said, yeah, I think he playing over that at the Al Hamburger <laughs> ballroom or something. You know, Hamburger. Yeah, the hamburger joint. Yeah, he's like, what? He's serving burgers? I'm like, yeah, right, right. the Al Hamburger uh, joint, you know. So, um, so Pete, if you ready, let me go to the video, come back and talk more to Reggie Wells right here on What's Going On. We're live on FRP TV. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. We are back. Oh my god. You know what? I, I love I love music. You know, I love videos because when I first started my show, you know, everybody's going, oh, you got a video show. No, I don't have a video show. I have a television program and video and music having to be a part of my content. Right, right. But I've always loved music. So I we had to take a break and play some music, man. And then, you know, I'm sitting here, like, getting right. into the music. Me too. I'm feeling the vibe. Man, I'm feeling the vibe. Man, I'm loving it. So, but I got to I gotta thank you for coming, though. Because Thanks for you're, having me, you're man. You're a busy guy, man. Uh, kind of. Yeah. It seems like that. But, um, you know, I, the nightlife, that's what you, you think I'm busy because I, I live the nightlife a lot. But during the day, um, you know, I got a lot of shut eye. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like... <laughs> It's like, uh, <laughs> listen, don't bother me between the hours of 9 and 5 and get me after that. You know, you know it's funny you said 9 to 5. I remember my, my mother told me, and this is funny. And it's a true story, uh -huh. too. She said, you know, because I lived the nightlife for such a long time. Right. And my mother said, man, you, all you do is you sleep all day. She said, why don't you get yourself a 9 to 5? I said, Ma. I have a nine to five. I said, you'll have society way. Right. Society way is 9 a.m. to right. 5 p.m. Right. We have 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. See, when you work at a club, the staff got to be there at 9. Right. We open the doors up at 10. We right. close at 4 and get paid at 5. And still go. eat breakfast in the morning. Right. <laughs> 9 to 5. 9 to 5. You know, like right. Big Red. One of my office hours again? <laughs> Nine, Nine to, to five. five, you know. So <laughs> right. regardless of whether it's the morning or at or night, the evening, you know. Right, so, right. but you know, it, it panned out better for you in the evening because most of the people doing the hustle and bustle at the nine to five a.m. Right, you right. know, and and want to go out and enjoy themselves when that 
uh, that five o'clock bell rings for Friday. Right. They right. need somewhere to go, so they need somebody out there that do what you do. You right, know? right. And that right. is, you know, make it uh, a safe and, and enjoyable venue where people can come out and have a good time. Right. Drinks, right. get on the dance floor, mix right. and mingle, right. and of course listen to some people performing as well, and right. get some top DJs, and <clears throat> including yourself. You know. Thank you know, you. you've played your events, and, <laughs> but you give events and you have the DJs come out and do their thing. Talk about some of the things. Now, we, 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 we kind of touched on your past in, 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 in terms of you starting out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you, you, you left out that you want to mention before we bring it up to now, um, to present day? Well, you know, just like to thank some of the promoters okay. who have helped me in my career, okay. launch my career. I'd like to thank... Um, Again, Jerry Roebuck, right. which we had a production. It was called Jerry Production Association with Reggie Wells and Harold Maynard. And I'd like to thank Scotty Flash. Oh, Scotty Flash. He's still right. doing his thing? Uh, no. He, okay. He slowed down. Right. I'd like to thank, thank the Dow Twins. Oh, the Dow Twins, right. Um, Steve Giuliano. I used to work at the Red Parrot. Oh, he was man, part owner of Steve Giuliano. I mean, he was part owner of the Red Parrot. And matter of fact, before, and he was the owner of Bentley's okay. and The Shadow. But I used to play at Bentley's before it was Bentley's. It was called Shea Sheet. <laughs> so a lot of people. <laughs> I'm sitting back for this one. I got you taking me back, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and there's other promoters like Brand New Production, right. uh, Marcus Welby and Rick Miller. Uh, I could go on and on. Um, I like to thank them, you know. Rest in peace, my man, Gene Pendergrass. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and there's other people as well that i like to thank them for allowing me to have the opportunity to perform at the events. And, right. you know, without them, what they did, they gave me the opportunity to show the public what I can do. Right. And people got to realize, and some DJs got to realize, the public is the one that makes you. You know, and they gave me that venue and that opportunity to play my music. Right. And... You know, they didn't, some of them didn't even have my name on the flyer. All right. And once they left that party that night, they said, who was who that? Who was that, right. Right. And that's how it works. It's like a domino effect. Right. If, like if you hire me for one of your events, and I, even if my name is not on the flyer, and, and I'm, you know, I'm creating that environment. Right. I'm, I'm <clears throat> setting that tone, and I'm making Absolutely. people having fun. And they're going to remember, it's like, who was that guy? Right, right. Or who was that DJ? And then you call me and say, well, Reg, man, I got a party. And then you'll hire me. Then somebody might be there from your event right. that might hire me. So it's a domino right. effect. Right. Right. So the public makes you, and right. the owner and the a promoter always give you the opportunity to show you what you could do. Yeah. The the um the transition from playing at the club to actually promoting and having DJs come out and do the event. Because I know you know you, when you promote some of your own events, mm -hmm. you also DJ. Mm -hmm. You know, do you when you promote your events and and have events now? Do you bring in DJs or do you still try to do your thing and or spend well, the time? Or well, recently I just, you know, started back playing. Right, right. And one of the reasons why I had kind of stopped playing, a lot of the clubs that no longer exist that right. I had worked for, and when they closed, didn't mean my career was over. Right, right. You know, a lot of some of the DJs, you're a house DJ and you commit yourself and you're there for many years and all of a sudden they close and then, you know, you don't know what to do. Right, right. You know, or somebody else is not going to hire you. Right. So instead of me waiting for somebody to hire me, I started my own production, which is RW and Company. And, right. you know, I, I had my own venues. Right. And then I hired DJs to, you know, far as play for me. Right. But the DJs that I did hire, I want them to do something, I mean, similar to what I was right, doing. Right. You know, I'm giving you this venue. Right. You know, I want you to create this atmosphere. Right. You know, I want you to, don't tell me that these people can't dance right. or they don't want to dance. Right, right. You know. Is this your job to get them this on the dance floor? This is, my job is to get them here. <clears throat> right. And your job, because this is your house now. Right, you right. create this environment. Right. You know, because all in the club is what? Lights, a dance floor, a bar, right, and music. Right. So who who controls the environment? The, the music, DJ. that's right. That's what I'm saying. So right. um, that's how I started my own production, right. you know, and I had stopped playing for a while, okay. you know, because uh, it, 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 how could I put it? <laughs> Well, I took a I took more of a risk promoting because you know you gotta put out money to make money, <laughs> and that's a big responsibility. Right, right, right. But so far, 
Um, you know, I had my ups and downs, but the majority of the time, you right. know, I had very successful right. events. Right. And not only, you know, what amazed me by making that transition from a DJ to a promoter, where usually people want to come out and hear you play. Right. You know, they don't want to see you walking around being a host. Right, right, but right. But see, now right. I realize that it requires more than just being a DJ. You know, your personality, your right. people's person, you socialize, right. mix and mingle. Right. So people still came out even though I wasn't playing. And again, and the DJs that I did select, they they held it down for me. Because I, I know <clears throat> in coming up to the all, all, all hamburger ballroom. Alhambra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the all hamburger Alhambra ballroom. Okay. On Which is on 126th Street. Street. Right. In 7th. And, in 7th Avenue. 7th Avenue right. in Harlem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember, you know, people having their birthday parties and okay. Beef Fats would play or right. or you'd have, um, um, uh, was Carlton playing? Uh, Carlton, Howie um, D. Howie D. Justice. Uh, Lady D. Lady Wells. Lady D. Wells. Right. Right. You um, know. Um, you know, I had a variety of DJs, you know, I try to give them opportunity right now, what I'm doing today, you know, you have so many DJs right. out here today and I'm, I'm looking for some, some new cats, right, man, right. you know, to oh, give yeah, yeah, them, yeah. because if you don't give them the exposure and they might be good, but how are they going to, how they, how, right, how they going to grow, how are they right. going to grow? Right. Right. But, you know, I'm not just looking for just a DJ to play the hip hop. I'm not right. looking for a DJ to just scratch back and, right. you know, back and forth. And the people just standing there. You want a DJ that can control you, the house. Control the house. Take go. them somewhere. Take them, right. Motivate them. Create. Right. Motivate them. Right. You know, right. that's what I'm looking for right. now. You know, so if you're out there, you know, look for me. Matter of fact, you give know. me your um, information on how to get you other social well, set, social right. networks. I'm on Facebook, but I use the page Reggie Wells. I have two pages on Facebook. Or you, I'm on Instagram, DJ Reggie Wells. Join me on Facebook as well as Instagram. I'm on what? Twitter? Tweet, uh, tweet, tweet. I don't tweet. I don't tweet. <laughs> I, you know, people say they tweet. I'm sitting next to this guy. He blowing his nose. Right. I'm sitting. I'm like, so they tweet every two seconds. Like, right. And if you do that for two hours, how are you working? Right. Right. You know. Right, so I right. always, I, I never understood tweeting. I, I, so I stick with the Instagram and the Facebook. Right. And and I use it basically for what I do because you know it's just so much going on in there. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't doing radio and television, I would be Facebook right. would be just obsolete because I just think there's too right. much going on in there. Now Instagram, you know. Um, it took me a long time to get on Instagram. When I got there, I kind of understood what it was, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and it's more or less, you know, photo sharing and kind of promoting what you do. Right. And basically, because what you do and what I do, we, we need this social network in order to right. continue to let people know what's going on. Because there's always news people that are friends of somebody right. that'll see it, you know. So that's how you get in touch with him. And I, and I wanted him to do that because, you know, a lot of them hear about your events and be like, mm -hmm. wow, Reggie's at Bessemer, Reggie's at Al, Al Hamburger Ballroom. Alhambra Ballroom. Or, or <laughs> have gonna, the Alhambra. Yeah, the Alhambra. <laughs> <laughs> then you, you're gonna be doing Miss. You did the Cotton Club with right. um, 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 was it Melbourne Moore? Melbourne Moore, right. yeah. She had a, a CD release party right. you know? last year, and then you do I the boat ride. I did do the boat ride, right. which was Wednesdays right. um, after work, right. and we were leaving from 125th Street and the West Side Highway, Pier One. Um, instead of I was doing it every week last right. year. And I, this year, I might just do every two, twice out of a month. Twice out of a month, right. right. So I'm in the process of putting that to, back okay. together. So right. um, I'm working on that. And plus, I have a new venue, okay. which is coming up um, starting April 28th, right. which is going to be at Miss. Right. Um, 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 that's on 146 West 116th right. Street between Lenox and Fifth Avenue. Right. And um, I'm happy that they allow me that opportunity right. to be there you know it's a it's a beautiful venue man. yeah I've, I've been there i remember the late great vaughn harper yes, was doing yeah. stuff at missing out i got a chance to go there i don't know if they did any renovations or did anything new i don't know if it's still the same no it's under new management okay okay that's what's different well just to let y'all know april 28th i'm going to be in the house we're going to be videotaping okay um so you know just want to let y'all know you want to come out and listen if you got felonies <laughs> please avoid the camera because I don't want nobody to call you you got me on camera no nah, yeah, you got on that? camera you know so well, you know that's funny that you say that you know is you remember back in the day where um you want to keep in contact with the public and you have a mailing list card and people right. are so quick oh. to sign the name the the address right. and zip code and the zodiac sign right right and now today you, you have them fill out a mailing list card they just want to put their uh, email, yeah, nothing else, nothing else to contact them. Like you know, right. I don't want you to. Live, yeah. I don't want you to know where I live. With this protection program, or something? Ooh, right? That's one. <laughs> oh, really? I bet you we go through some video. You on video, so I mean, come on, give me the information so we can you know send you right. some updated but information. But some of them they're not on social media, right? Right. So right. you know, and then uh, uh, you ask a lot of the. 
I would say, you know, the older generation, right. you know, there right. a lot of them not into Facebook. No, a lot no. of them are into Instagram. You know what it is? A lot you of them know? are not tech savvy right, and, and right. really don't want to go that route because, you know, it, it's, it might be a, another way of keeping them from doing what they normally do. Right. You know, because um, like I said, with the tweeting, man, I, I mm-hmm. can't sit there. Because you got to tweet every time you turn around. Tweet, tweet, tweet. But I you know what's so bad about it, too, because. See, back in the days, we would get a certain amount of flyers, right. and we would have places to go to distribute them. Right. Today, we don't have too many places that are available where people go out. Right. And if you if you print up, you know, like ten thousand, fifteen thousand flyers, where are you gonna give them at? Right. Right. You know, you know, it, it, you don't have the clubs right. like Just Things, Leviticus, right. Savage, Pegasus. Um, Hotel Diplomat, <sighs> you know, Kilimanjaro. Um, wow. I could go on and on and on. You know, so you just have to wait until you a uh, well-known promoter that's having a special right. event, and that's where you're going to give your flies right. out. So now with social media, if you, if a lot of y'all that have supported me over the years and y'all don't think I'm still out here doing something, um, just log on to my Facebook page, and my Instagram page, Definitely. or email me at nyreg seventy nine at gmail dot com. As a matter of okay. fact, now that you said that, um. Was it N Y R E G seventy nine? There's also your Instagram um, page. Yes, that's yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah, because right. I know you said Reggie Wells on Instagram, right? And 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 people go there looking for Reggie Wells, but you can type in a name and it'll come up. Well, it'll come it'll up. Come right, up to right. NY Reg um, seventy nine. Oh, just Google me. Just Google him. Listen, Google something will pop up. There you go. Something will <laughs> pop up. Reggie Wells. Hmm. Caught stealing potato chips out of out of hamburger ballroom. <laughs> Listen, let's take another Funny break. Guy, man. <laughs> I should have been a comedian. <laughs> But we're going to take a break, come back. Uh, we're going to go to another video and come back and talk more with Reggie Wells. What's going on? We're live up here at FRP TV. Thank you to everybody that's tuned in. And uh, look, don't go nowhere. We'll be right back, all right? Yes, indeed. We are back. What's going on? Live up here at FRP TV. And, of course, my special guest is still in the building. He didn't go nowhere. Reggie Wells is still here. And we we kind of touched on a couple of things that you got going on, a couple of new venues. Um, Miss, you you still doing um, Besame and Alhambra? Besame on Saturdays, okay. right, from um, 7 until about 1 o'clock. Okay, and, and give me the address to Besame. Cause That's uh, 2116. Something like that. 7th Avenue and 124th Street, the corner of 124th Street. You know, they we say Seventh Avenue because I'm from the real school, not the old school. Right. But it's Adam Clayton Adam Powell, Clayton Bo- Powell Boulevard. Boulevard, yep. right? And um, Miss is uh, 46 West 116th Street, and yeah. that's between um, that's between Lennox Lennox and, Lennox and, Lennox and Fifth, right. Right, right? Okay, and 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 again, Miss is on is going to be um, kicking off April 28th. Uh, April 28th, right? right. That's a Saturday. Yeah. Saturday's free admission, so What's come that? on down. The Friday. It's Friday, Friday. right? Uh, I said Saturday. Hey, start you you off with me. me, right? Stop agreeing with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody be showing up on Saturday. Well, I thought you said you gonna be here. And, you, you know, I wanted to say too. You know, when you're doing interviews right. and plus is live, sometimes you you forget to mention certain people. Right. First of all, I'd like to thank you for having me. Oh man, you you're know, welcome. Appreciate man. Anytime, that. Anytime. You know, we've been missing each other for I a minute. Know, I you know, I know. But uh, thanks for having me. I'm you're enjoying welcome. myself immensely. And, you know, I just want to give a shout out to some of the DJs that, you know, I have worked with over okay. the years. You know, first of all, I have to give a big shout out to my man, Cool DJ Red Alert. Oh, I mean, man. that's one of the coolest man, brothers, that, man. He's coming up here next week. Oh, really? Yeah. I tell him I say hello. And, you know, one thing about him, he could be anywhere. I mean, he, I mean one time, I, you know, he, I thought he, it was like a double because one day I see him at a party right. one night, then the next day, He's somewhere out of town. The next day, he's on a video somewhere. Then the next day, he's on live TV. Then he's at Madison Square. He's like, <laughs> sorry, <I'm saying>. right. <laughs> but, you got to talk to this brother, father, how many right. like quadruplets. Right, you know? right. And then, you know, like Howie D. Yeah, Howie Carlton D. T.T., um, you know, B-Fats, which he's right. going to be with me playing at Miss okay. on Fridays. Okay. Um, of course, Lady D. Wells. Right. Um, DJs I haven't seen in a while, you know, like Ruben Toro, um, you know, Felix Hernandez. Right, right. Um, well, I've seen him. Uh, Jelly Bean Benitez. Oh, my you God. You know, my man Don Welch. Right, right, uh, right. Um, you know, I had worked with a lot of DJs over the years. My man, it was, a, it was one DJ, he was so good, man. He worked at Reflections. Do you remember Reflections? I remember that Reflections. That was on 58th Street. Billy, we called him Billy Hot. And I mean, you talking about a brother that was good, yeah. But I'm, I'm just, just want to give a shout. You know, Hollywood, Eddie Chi was Starsky. You know, uh, 
I didn't forget y'all. Some of y'all, when y'all get, you know, when they interviewing y'all, y'all forget me. But right, I'm not right, that right. type of a guy. Right, right. I love each and every one of y'all. You know. There you go. See, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Michael P. Richard Hyde. That's right. Okay, yes. uh, and if, uh, if a name pops in your head while we talking, just say, "Oh yeah, hold on." Yeah. And Billy Bang Bang and Dolly Jr. <laughs> you know, just whatever. You know, if it comes to your head, just, Justin's. Just, you know, because he was here. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. Just, there you go. <laughs> get, get my DJ right. on so he can shout me out too. But you know. Uh, I, I, I want to say thank you because, again, like I said, you know, time, you know, is, is kind of of the essence. Now, it, it's not so many venues these days because you talk to a lot of people that own the, the venues and they're like, well, we don't want certain elements in there. Right. And, and when they talk about elements, it's not the color of, a, you know, the race of people. Mm -hmm. It's the type of people that the come clientele. to the, yeah, the clientele. And some clubs and some um, venues will say, we don't want this in there. What is it that you're going to be doing? And, and again, reputation is everything. I remember um, years ago, um, yeah, I can't, I can't think of the, the, the promoters, but one of them had passed away, and um, they, they used to, I mean, their party was always known for safety. And then one day, right. they just bypassed that, and something mm. happened, and they started losing venues, and it got smaller and right, smaller, right, right. so they start no more. And you know, I, I, I gotta say, um, kudos to you because you know, when, when you came up to Harlem and brought you know the music. And, and, and the people to Alhambra, um, to Bessemer, mm -hmm. you know, now to Miss, you know, mm -hmm. even the Cotton Club, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, it's now something going on in Harlem for the grown and the sexy. Right, right. You know, grown folk music, you know, right. and when you get grown folk in a grown folk atmosphere, grown folk come out to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, I, I agree. You know, we are, we are being neglected. Right. You know, it's not too many places for us, not too many venues or clubs like it used to be back in, like, in the 80s. Right. And um, that we don't have. What I see today, which I really don't understand, a lot of these restaurants and bars are converting into clubs. Right. And, um, you know, if these other clubs downtown stop charging so much. Right where you don't want to really charge the public too much. You know, a lot of these deals that the owners are asking for is kind of ridiculous. And then another thing which these owners, you know, they don't know how to separate a mature clientele far as from, you know, younger people. Right, right. You know, I have negotiated deals with some club owners and the prices that they charge or the deals that they come up with as if, you know, it's an industry party. Right, right. Or right. if it's, you know, then they want to hire all this crazy security right. if it's a hip-hop party. Right. You know, I'm not condemning none of that. Right. But I'm just saying, you know, I have a clientele which is, you know, we familiar with each right, other. Right. We older. These are working people. Right. Some of them are retired, right. you know, but they want to come out and have right. a good time. So when you want to have this phenomenal or crazy bar guarantee right. or rental fee, right. you know, we have to put out that money first in order to make it back. Right. And now you got so many expenses. Now you got your staff, you got your DJ, you have the club, then you have to get the flyers. We don't advertise that much today on right. radio right. because radio, you know, I love radio. I still right. listen to WBLS, right. still listen to your show right. as well. But, you know, you have so many outlets of listening to music today because a lot of people, you know, uh, you know, you have Pandora, you have SoundCloud, right, you have right. AOL Radio, right. you have Satellite Radio, right. you have Sirius Radio. Right. You know, it, it's like it's amazing. Right. You know, so we cut that, we cut back a little bit on advertising right. on radio. But um, again, you know, you have to, you know, times are changing. But some of your owners out there, stop overcharging yeah. these promoters man especially when when you have venues that you know like in Harlem I'm not gonna name the venue yeah but you know when when you have people that kind of try to do things they mm -hmm. don't know anything about right you know you did to run a restaurant now you got you know an area where you could dance you can bring a DJ and that's not your expertise so you right. bring somebody in that knows so listen to the DJ mm -hmm. listen to the promoter because mm -hmm. this is something they've been doing for a long time right kind of come together on some sort of mutual uh, agreement that is beneficial for both. Right, Because right. if you get priced out, he's got no clientele. Right, right You know, but if right. somebody comes there, they're going to patronize the bar because remember back in the days, the bar guarantee was 1500 and you came right. up with... Eleven hundred, you got to pay that four hundred dollars. Right, right. You right. know, and not to say what are you getting at the door. So then, and 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 I, and I say that to say this because back in the days I was doing you know videotaping at the Club Elite, mm -hmm. and um, oh, man, okay, I remember that. Yeah, Club Elite down on Twenty First <laughs> Street, I think. Right, right. And and so the guy that was promoting the event, he would say, Murph, I got you for X amount of dollars coming to videotape. I come in, then he was like, Oh, Murph, man, it's just so. I said, Bro, let me tell you something. I done seen you let 
one person come in that had 10 people, they had another person that had 20 people, mm -hmm. you wasn't going to make no money. I already seen that happening. Mm -hmm. I said, so whatever you want to give me tonight, let's make this the last time mm -hmm. we do business together right, because right. I can't trust you to do what you say and for me to, to offer you the, the, the services that I offer, you're not giving me the money for the services that I render. Right, so right. let's just call it off and let's continue to be friends. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're not going to be friends. And I see that happening now. Like you say, you look at some of these venues and they price you out mm -hmm. before they even get you in there, mm -hmm. thinking that you're their money machine, you right, know, right. And, that, and it's not fair. It's like, what do you need in order to make and this you know, it's funny today, you know, back in the day. I, hey, listen, it, 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 this is what's happening. I'm with it. You know, I don't understand it. You know, you have the venues today, the bottle service. You know, <laughs> they want to buy the whole entire bottle of right. whatever. Kanye, I mean, you know, Ciroc or whatever, right. Henny, Henny. Right, whatever. they were walking around with the bottle. They right. walking around with the bottle the whole entire time. So now these owners don't understand that. If you have an older, mature clientele, we don't buy we don't the do bottles. That. No, we don't we do that. still go with the glass. Right, right. You know, we buy a shot or something right. like that. So that's why I think they over, because, you know, you charge so much for the bottle. Right. Instead of just the glass. Right. You know, so they prefer just selling the bottle. Right. Now, can you imagine a group of people buying... Henny, Ciroc, or whatever, that hard liquor, and they drinking all that, it's going to be an It's going to be right. It's going to be a, <laughs> and, and, and the weather's changing, too? Right, right, right. Oh, man. Right, and, right. And, and, and God forbid somebody come in that you might have just a little animosity against, mm -hmm. and that liquor's in you. Right. It, it's a wrap, you right, know, so right, there, go, right. there goes, uh, you know, the venue. That could, right. You might as well say that venue's finished, you know, because... Yeah, back in the day, man, we used to come out, we just party, That's man. it, that's it. You know, and, and have a good time, and, yeah. you know, mix and mingle, right. dance, and... You know, you could stand outside the club afterwards. There ain't no and issues. Talk, right, you know, right, you got right. some parties today, which again, I'm not condemning. You right. know, this is the generation. I heard uh, a young brother was telling me, he said, Raj, man, I have to go to the party early, early and leave. And leave early. Early, yeah. <laughs> I, I used to say the same thing. I'm like, okay, you know, because certain time of night, you know, you got certain people come out at a certain right, time of right. night. Because grown folk who come out, you know, to parties that are early. Like if you say, you know, from six to one, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to get the people that come after work and figure, you know, I, I want to get me some rest. So I'm going to go out there like six, seven, go have a good time, have me a couple mm -hmm. of drinks, have me something to eat. And then I'll be ready to go home maybe right. about 11, 1130. Right, right. You know, but when you say something's till four o'clock and then you got people that's coming at one o'clock, you mm -hmm. know, what did they do before one o'clock? Right, right. They probably went to another venue and then had a couple of shots. Right, then now right. they want to come and act up at your venue right, or right. your event, you know, right. and, and that's not fair. But speaking of events, once again, tell everybody, um, again, what's happening as far as your new event, uh, new venue, rather, on April 28th. Yeah, April 28th, again, we're going to be at Miss, which is um, 46 West 116th Street between Lenox and Fifth Avenue. That's going to be taking place April 28th, a Friday after work. So I want mm -hmm. you to come on down. It's free all night. The kitchen is open. We have drink specials. We're going to have a special guest DJ as well as a surprise live entertainment. All right. I'm not going to mention, so just come on down. You know, spread the word. Email, text, Google, whatever you have to do, get the word out. It's That's going to right. be popping up there in Harlem. That's right. And I'm going to be there videotaping for what's going on. So come on out. And, and again, if you're not supposed to be on TV or... Well, you, 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 you know what I'm saying. If you're in the witness protection program and <laughs> you're not supposed to be out, avoid the camera. Because right, the right. camera will be on and I will be talking to people and asking how you are uh, enjoying your evening out here at Miss at Reggie's new uh, venue on April 28th. Uh, so come on out. Have a good time. Um, Reg, you know, uh, anything else that you want to talk about before we get out of here? Because, oh, again... Uh, also, um, let me mention, you know, one of... The clubs that I, one or two of the clubs that I really enjoyed working for and working, yeah, it was Club 371 in the Bronx. Wow, wow. And that's where it was Hollywood, right. rest in peace, Junebug, right. Eddie Cheever, right. and myself. Right. And that was called the only day with the 10 good guys, mm. you know, and that was a hell of a club. I right. worked there for a number of years and it was a great experience of just working with the four DJs, and that's the only club that I have ever worked at where all four of us had our own identity. Mm. You know, where, you know, Hollywood, of right. course, Eddie Chiba, right. rest in peace, June right, Bob, and myself, right. you know, and 
it was a yeah, it was a learning experience, right. even though we was playing together, but in the way we was competing with right. each other every week. Right. <laughs> and that's that's what makes it good, because you know who wins, right? Mm-hmm. The people that come out and enjoy The people that come out and enjoy it. That's who wins. And I didn't realize how popular the club was until it was closed. Right. And I didn't realize how Justine's was so popular right. until it closed, right. until, you know, I'm out in the street and people say, yo, I remember you from right. Justine's. Justine's. right. And then one of the largest clubs that I ever worked at was Barnes International. Barnes International. Right there. What was that, 43rd? It was in the heart of yeah, Times Square. Square right. right. It was right on the corner. And that place hold about 5,000 yeah. people. And the DJ booth was probably big as of, uh, I mean, it was so huge in the amps. I mean, it was so, I wish I took pictures wow. of the DJ booth right. to see all the amps that we had against mm. the wall. And right. I mean, it was so huge, you know, and that to, to, could you imagine the amount of speakers we had in there? Man, Five thousand people. How, how many people had busted eardrums after the night was oh, over? Please, you know, especially if they stood next to the speakers. Right, and you then know? the Palladium. Right, which oh, yeah. was Palladium. a great experience. You, did, you ever did the Red Parrot? Oh, of course, yeah, I worked there. You there. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I worked there for uh-huh. about three to four years. Right, yeah, and that was yeah. a great experience. You know, wow. uh, working with a lot of the artists, and plus, uh, let me give a shout out to Spike Lee. Oh, okay. I used to work for Spike Lee. He used to um, take me to Washington, D.C. Okay. And to Atlanta, Georgia, and we would, uh, I would play for Morehouse and Howard University Homecoming. Wow. And one year in Washington, and the next year in Atlanta, Georgia, then I used to play for a lot of his movies. You know, right. when the, 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 what is it called, rap? When they wrap it up? Yeah, when they wrap it up, the rap parties. Right, the rap yeah. parties, yeah. and then I'll, I'll play for them, you know. Okay. So, like, school days, she got to have it. Uh, quite a few of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. And now, now looking back on clubs that closed, because now if you mentioned, you know, you kind of your, if you if you had to do it all over again and somebody came to you and said, I need you to play at this club, would you, a, a club that you would have said, well, you know, let me, let me, let me skip that, M- knowing what you know now about that, that venue, um, is there one that you probably say, you know what, if I had to do over again, that might not have been the, my choice? Not really, because a matter of fact, I forgot another one. Demararis. Oh, Demar- oh my God, Demararis. <laughs> How many times that name changed? How many times they changed oh, the name? Yeah. And the only there was Robert Facey. How you doing, Robert? <laughs> Demararis. No, um, it was another club, Level Ten. Okay. Um, you know, some people say, you know, I have my best uh, uh, experience, the, like you said, was Barnes International was like right, the biggest. Right, and the then biggest. you know, you always have like one of the clubs or one of the places that you did. You probably say, well. One of those particular nights in that place, just I shouldn't have never been there. Or things happen that I would say, if not, I shouldn't have been there. Just working with the establishment. Okay. You know, when you're working with owners, they have their way of running things. Right. Right. And you know, if you hire me as a DJ to do my job, I allow me right. to do my right. job. Right. Now, if you know you want me to play, I remember one place. I'm not going to mention them. He told me not to play this record. Mm. And I'm saying, but it's one of the hottest records. Right. But he felt that it was promoting another club because they was mentioning ah, okay. the club okay. in the song. Right. But it wasn't. It right. was one of the hottest records that was in the top five. People wanted to hear it, but I couldn't play it. Mm. I was working at another place, I'm not going to even say the name, where KC, which was my MC. KC, the Prince of Soul? Yeah. Him and I, we worked together for right. many years. Right. And... This particular owner didn't want KC to mention my name. Now, here I'm playing. I'm doing a nice mix. People making noise. And, you know, because the mix came in nice. And KC would say, Reggie Wells or whatever. And they said, no, don't mention my name. What and I'm going like, is he serious? And he really told me. He said, well, I don't want this club based around you. Because, you know, sooner or later, you and I might not see eye to eye. I might have to let you go. So I don't want you. <laughs> and I never looked at myself like that. I just enjoy <laughs> playing my music and making people happy. But I didn't look at it from that business aspect. Certain things you say I would regret, I would have negotiate better deals back right. then. Okay. Because I had so much love for the game that I wasn't even looking at the right. money right. part of right. it, you know. It's the ability to move the crowd and just enjoy right. what you're doing. And it was, right. you know, when you when you say I was committed to it, I right. had I had the, I was really committed to you know playing my music, and and not looking at because I was working so much. Right. I mean, at times where on a Friday I was working on a Thursday, mm. right, an after work event. Then I was doing a Friday after work, and then after I leave from there, 
from after work from like five until about 10 or 11, then I go to another venue that same night. And then Saturday, I would do a wedding in the morning, mm. right? Like at 11, right. we got to set up 11, we start, you know, the wedding starts around about 12. And then from there, we would go do a boat ride. You know, when we used to do the day liner right, and right. The, um, the the circle liner. Oh, the circle liner. When they used to leave around about yeah, 7.30. I that. And then from there, I would do the after party. <laughs> so I would leave my house almost 9 o'clock in the morning, right. come back at 6 o'clock in the morning. And I was working that much. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday. It, it, when, when, when that amount of time kind of went down a little bit did you miss working that much or did you say okay you you kind of like um let's use your time a little bit more wiser you know because back then well, like you said you had so many days you were doing and when the days kind of like dwindled to maybe three days a week you know well when i when i became a promoter right. you know so and you you could work less right. you spend more time promoting right. and have a one shot you have a one big event right Instead of so you get paid that one big event, right, right, right. Instead of working all those different parties, right. and you know you getting a little tweaks, sprinkling here, sprinkling there, yeah, right, right. You get one big. It's, right. it's like it's like a songwriter as opposed to the guy singing the song. You know, right, right, you know right. the songwriter's gonna get his money. You know, right, and, and right. the guy who sings the song, well, you know, as the money changes hands, then you know, of course, right. he get his share. But um, you know, but honestly, I, I, every place that I did work, work at or in the clubs that I worked for. I enjoy each and every right. one of them. You know, it's it all was, a part of your learning experience. Right, you know, and bringing right. you who you are today. I'm still learning today, of, man. Listen, I, I had that conversation with somebody earlier. The day you stop learning is the day you need to just, right. just get out of here. Just in right now, I'm making the transition far as from playing vinyl and going to a laptop. Right. Now, and it took me a while. And the reason why I say that, because when you're playing vinyl, right. You're going through your crate. You're looking at that cover right, of right, that song right. that, you, you know, you want to play. And believe it or not, times I play records over and over and over, and I might not knew the title, but I knew that cover. Knew that cover, right. Right? And now when you're Switching playing from a laptop, MP3, all you're seeing is the names, title right. of the song, the title of the artist, Beats per minute. Right. You don't even know what record label is right, on, who was right. produced by. Right. You know, well, that's the song right. you want. <laughs> and just to give a good example. Say, for example, you have Jay Z or R. Right. Kelly, which they have many hits. Right. Now, I got to remember that title of that, that song, song, that, that you... particular song. And that and it, it's taken me a while until today because I got to keep thinking, you know. And then some of the DJs, I mean, a lot of them, they have it easy. Right. See, back, you know, today, you could, your controller. You can synchronize music. Right. You have you can see the beats per minute. So right. you know what songs go right. with each other. We didn't have that right. when we was playing yeah, vinyl. Listen. You was playing from That's the right. rhythm. You was playing from your heart. Right. You was playing from the vibe. Right. You know? And you know, a lot of DJs today, they don't know how to work that pitch con pitch control. They right. wanna just scratch, throw it in. Right. I like to hear some blending. Right. You know, everything is not a funky beat. No, no. And then you got some of the DJs, since you know, they want to show their versatility by playing some of the old records along with the new. And then they want to cut up the old songs. See, back in the day, you know, <laughs> we would let the whole, let the whole thing song, yeah. play. And then they know when that break part is coming. Right. They getting ready to get the bone out of the right, right, right. They, they, they turn around, they cut it off. and you be like, oh, man, I know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I remember um, being at Bessemer, and I, I forgot who the DJ was, but he was playing the songs, and all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, this is the good part. Then right. next thing you know, right, right. the mix. I'm like, I had oh, a DJ play me. for me one time, and I, and he wasn't playing. The, he wasn't paying attention to the dance floor. Right. And I had to go back. I had to go over to him and say, "Listen, put that back on." Right. 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 I said, "Did you see? They was getting ready to get into. Right. You took off the best part. Right. You just cut it. Right. Man, let it play. Or because you wanted to do you instead right. of you know. Right. Instead Even of watching. He still power. had them, right. but they was kind of disappointed because. You know, some old folks, they all they get yeah. the bone yeah. they're going to get that dip in. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, it, I, I forgot when it was. Um, I think it was in um, January of last year. Um, you was playing at uh, Bessemer, and I was there for a birthday party. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there, and you played the whistle song. And I was like, yo, that's my song. And everybody sitting there like, What's the big deal about the song? I'm like, y'all right, right. wouldn't know. Right, right. You wouldn't right, know. Right. And 
I, I say that to say this, you know, the, the, the young people today don't understand the music from yesterday and right. how that helped to create what we have today. Right. But if you start mixing this with that mm -hmm. and taking away, like you said, the whole song, it takes away from us who come out there to hear that song. Right, right, you know, because right. if I wanted to hear the young stuff, I, I'd find another club to go to. Right, right. You know, I, I know if I come to, to a Reggie Wells party, I'm going to hear me some, some, some music, right, right, you know, right. the, the soundtrack to our growing up. Right. You know, I don't want to hear the soundtrack to... Mm -hmm. to, to booty music and doodle mm -hmm. this and booty that and shoot this and drug that and <laughs> sniff that and, and bang this. You know, I don't want that. Right, you right, know? right, Because right. at least in, when we played it back in the day, it's Psychedelic Shack, Crystal right. Blue Persuasion. Right. We hit it. Right. People just coming out saying, now nah, I want to beat the... And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? What does that you mean? You know, uh, it's funny that I was just thinking, I remember one time I was at the Red Parrot and they happened to be around about, say, 2.40 in the morning. And... I was, you know, we've been, we was rocking all night, right? rocking on. So, you know, again, like we were saying, a record could play, you know, we'd let the whole thing play right. out. So I had stepped out the DJ booth and I'm right by the, the entrance of the DJ booth. And all of a sudden the record starts skipping. <laughs> <laughs> now I got almost 3,000 people in there. Right. They all dancing. And all of a sudden they started booing, going, boo. So I said, really? I turned the music off, picked up the microphone. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, I know y'all must be joking. Right. I said, we've been rocking. It's around about 3.40 in the morning or 2.40 in the morning. Right. I deserve one little mess up. Now, right. And right. y'all going to boo me? Right. You know what I did? I took the regular, cracked it, and threw it in the <laughs> <laughs> Now they got souvenirs. <laughs> souvenirs. <laughs> and that, I remember that, and that was during the time the butt was out. Oh, you were in the butt? Right. So... You know, I, I, I was saying, I ain't scared of you. Like, buddy, like, I ain't scared of I ain't your scared mother, of you, mother, mother, mother. I ain't scared of you. I, I, I ain't scared of you, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> so hey. I cracked it, threw right. it in the audience. At the same time, make an announcement, you know, saying what I got to say. I'm looking right. for you. Right. Soon I put that song back. Soon I put that song on. They forgot Everybody all about forgot. it. They forgot. Like, hey, yeah, that's it. Oh, uh, so Reggie, yeah. Reggie. <laughs> Yeah, that, hey, was, that was wrong. That you was a good experience, all night man. Long, man. Right, right. Oh man, Reg, I, I had such a great time with you, man. Um, but the time is like you know, it's it's, it's about up, and you know, we we, we definitely got to do it again. Like I said, I'll be down there um, at, at um, Miss, and uh, okay. we we're gonna, you know, we gonna do some more interviews. So yeah, please. Um, and, and and just hang out and, and and chew the fat. How they say chew the fat, shoot the breeze, all that right, kind of right, old stuff. Right. You know, I still watch my old black exploitation movies and catch the old okay. lingo. Try okay. to run some lingo on my son, and he be like, Dad, <laughs> please, you know. Talk right. I'm like that right. was right. Right, right, you know? right. But right. y'all talking now. I don't understand. So <laughs> I'm talking what I talk. Right, what right, I know. Right. You know, try to teach you just like y'all trying to teach us. Like y'all mm -hmm. trying to tell me what y'all have is music. Mm -hmm. I'm like in 20, 30 years from now, and y'all put that on. How y'all gonna dance to that? Or even you might ask yourself, what the hell? And right. I was dancing to that. Was, yeah, you know, yeah. our, our music is timeless. We could put our music in a time capsule, and and in the year four thousand. Not that we're gonna be here in four thousand. Somebody open it up, and they're gonna say, wow, that's some bad music here, mm -hmm, man. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I, you know that's, that's that's what I'm saying. But again, um, I, I want to say thank you, man, and 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 always yeah, a pleasure once again, having you. Thanks man. for having me. You know, I'm, anytime, man. I'm, um, I'll come back at any time. Just yeah, let yeah. me know, okay? We got yeah. still still got a lot to talk yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you, you know, know we, we we have some 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 things that you know, you know, like some that of we didn't crazy. cover yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's for part two. But like I said, the door's always open. This is home okay. to you. Thank you. Um, anytime you want to come and say, Murph, you know, I, I got some things to talk about. Let's do it. We're gonna okay. do it. All right. Once again, I'm here each and every Tuesday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. right here on FRPLive.tv. Um, what's going on? I've been doing this a long time, 31 years I've been doing uh, what's going on. So I want to thank all the people that's been with us throughout those years and uh, just, just been following us. Continue to follow us here and continue to, to just, you know, stay up on what Reggie's doing. Like I said, he's bringing the grown and the sexy up to Harlem. He's bringing the grown and sexy to places that you may not see grown and sexy, but we'll welcome it. So anytime you hear Reggie's doing something, come on out. He's got the, he said he's going to try to do twice a month for the boat rides. And twice sometime. a month for the boat rides. Um, plus, I'm going to have a bus ride as okay. well. And um, each and every Friday and okay. Saturday, again, once again, at um, Bessemer on Saturdays from okay. 7 to 1. Um, Miss on Fridays. And matter of fact, each one, both of them are free. Okay. And I'll be there on the 28th to, to videotape. Like I said, if you got felonies in the witness protection program or <laughs> if you're hanging out with some people you ain't supposed to be hanging out with, don't find the camera. All right? 
That's it for us. We'll see you next week. Thanks again to everybody, all the staff up here at FRP TV. Thank you so much. And Reggie Wells, once again, our love, brother, to you and well, all love. the things that you do. Much success. Continue success, as I know you'll be successful. And you'll make sure you'll keep watching my man. All right. And it, Big man, Murph. Hey, man, I get a little plug out of this, man. <laughs> Big I Murph. Like that. Oh, man, see, I got to go now. Cause I'm, I'm, man, I got to go wipe Peace. my eyes. I'm tired now. See y'all later, man. We <laughs> out of here. Oh, Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>